Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I appreciate being able to give the message this morning. Why don't I open us in prayer, okay? Oh, Lord, how amazing is your grace. We thank you for the salvation offered to us through Jesus Christ. Thank you for our church. Thank you for the wider church as well, that we have a community of believers uh, here at Bread of Life Church. And we pray that you be with us this morning. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So faithful to the end is our theme this year for our church, faithful to the end. And let's recap that theme, okay? In 2023, this is, this is the recap of the theme. In 2023, let's be mindful that each and every day is a precious gift from God. When everything is said and done, what matters forever is whether we have done what God has said. That daily resolution to obey God, by the powerful strength of his spirit and for the ultimate praise of his son, eventually translates into a lifetime that is faithful to the end, a legacy that is cherished for all eternity, and a journey that, is, that joyfully exclaims with the Apostle Paul, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. And that's from 2 Timothy 4, 7. Well, wasn't that great? Well, if you like that, that was right off the church website, okay? <laughs> so faithful to the end, living faithfully. And part of living faithfully is being part of a church, a local community of believers who meet regularly to grow together. And when I say grow together, we're talking about maturing to be like Jesus, to have the character of Jesus Christ, to show others Christ's love and what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Not to have everything, have everything picture perfect. Not like a perfect Instagram post or perfect Facebook. Not that kind of perfect. But to go through life struggles, supporting each other, and seeking to please God. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Eric Louie. And this is my first year as an elder at our church. Pastor Dan asked the elders who are active to give a sermon once a year. We heard from Elder John, John Chow, about a month ago. And again, it's a privilege and a pleasure to be sharing with you this morning. I thought it would be nice to show a picture of who, for 2023, are part of our church board of elders and deacons. So if you can see that, the little circles, the circular pictures are our deacons. And on the left, is from my ordination in March, and that shows the pastors and elders. Okay, that's my wife Janet in the, in the orange, okay, if you, if you don't know Janet, all right? Um, if you look, I've, uh, in red, I've put who our English deacons are, okay? So, uh, as part of being part of the board of elders and deacons, uh, we help out in various roles. So, you see Guillermo there. Guillermo is the administrator of Bowl CCC, our, our children's uh, preschool and after school. He um, works with charity and acts as a board liaison. So he brings forth uh, things that are happening with the preschool and after school care. You see Terrence, Terrence, and, and um, this is just general board activities. They do much, much more than this, but Terrence is uh, in our safety security. He heads up that committee. Uh, Robert, Robert, um, does a lot with IT. If I don't say something nice about them, they would cut the sound for me, okay? Uh, let's see, Eddie Yang is our church board secretary. So Eddie is one of our board officers. Um, the other board officers are Daniel Johnson, Ann Mo, and um, Bing Ye. So Bing is our church treasurer, all right? He works with our accounting and um, handles our financial items, all right? Now, um, if you, so I want to say greetings from the pastors, elders, and active deacons. They don't know I'm extending the greeting, but since they have me preaching, I thought I could say greetings. Okay. Now, I also want to give greetings from my family. Okay. This is, this is my family. Okay. Uh, this is a picture that we took at church. It's hard to get everybody together now given our stage of life. The boys are in their 20s. So that's a nice picture of us. You see Janet and um, Michael, Daniel, and Jonathan. My sister's here visiting today to show her support, so that's nice too. Say hi to her afterwards. 
Okay, and then also I want to give greetings from our church family, okay? So this is just a picture that happened, again, it's off our website. It's amazing what you can find at breadoflifechurch.org. That's a plug. Okay, but that's, this is the global 6K walk that was recent. Uh, this is neat because it's all three congregations. This was to raise money in World Vision. Uh, the average um, in lesser developed countries, the average person walks 6K to go get their water. All right, that's not five miles in the snow to go to school, but they literally walk 6K to go get their water. And um, Howard was our um, team captain for Bread of Life, so thank you, Howard. And uh, if you see me, I'm wearing an orange visor, okay? So you can, <laughs> you can see me there, all right? Um, now, our church has a vision statement and a mission statement, okay? This is really good. I, I want us to keep in mind uh, that our Bread of Life Church seeks to be a vibrant community of believers that makes disciples in every nation. And our mission is to exalt Jesus Christ as Lord by embracing and exemplifying four major components. Okay, love for the Lord, instruction in the Word, fellowship with the saints, and evangelism in the world. So that is life, right? And um, acrostic, is that what it is? So acrostic for life, right? Nice tie-in, way to, way to go, guys. But um, that helps us to put our master plan, and there's, there's um, thoughts behind each of those, but I wanted to make us aware of that. So today in our message, uh, we're going to look at Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 16, and growing together. So our main idea, our take-home truth, is that God desires that we grow in Christ as a church family who seeks maturity and strengthens unity. So want us to remember that we grow in Christ all together, all together, all of us as a church maturing as Christians, that we should have a desire to mature as a corporate body and unity as a local church of Christians. And today's family discussion question is, how can we contribute to a friendly and encouraging church environment that enables us to grow more like Jesus? So we want to thank Anti-Faith and the Children's Ministry volunteers. When we put up this family discussion question, what happens is that we have a 915 worship service that's going on right now for the, for the children's ministry. And also with the pandemic, we have uh, parents and families at home that are also worshiping with us. So Minister Faith, our children's minister, minister puts together materials that those at home can access and um, join us with the sermon. So um, hi, everybody at home. Hi, kids. So they are um, going through this, and we're all in sync together. So it's, a, it, it's a pretty neat, right? I mean, I don't know if you're aware of that, but I think that's wonderful that it all ties in. Our outline for today is growing together. So growing together is a sermon title. And our divisions are walking in a manner that pursues our unity, or walk in a manner. Walk in a manner that exercises our gifts walk in a manner that matures our church body, okay, as we grow together. And again, the main idea is that God desires that we grow together in a church as a church family who seeks maturity and strengthens unity. Now, in terms of titles, I really, uh, so, you know, Bread of Life is B-O-L. I don't know if you've ever re heard it referred to as B-O-L. So, I wanted to put the title, I was thinking of walking and bowling together, get it, B-O-L, right? But uh, it's a little corny. So then I improved on that, okay? So for us of us that are, so those of us that are a little younger, we call church bread, right? That sounds cool, one word, bread, okay? So I had making bread, fulfilling our calling to unity in the church today, okay? We're not, you're not going to get 30 minutes of dad jokes, all right? But I really like those. Okay. So, again, I want us to think about today growing in Christ together, maturing as Christians, having a desire for this growth, maturity, and unity as a local church of Christians. So let's go to our first division and our uh, verse, okay? Walk in a manner that pursues our unity. And Ephesians Chapter 4, verse 1. 
I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. So when, this is the Apostle Paul. The I refers to the Apostle Paul, who is generally accepted as the author of Ephesians. And at the time of the writing was a prisoner in Rome. A prisoner of Rome is because Paul was arrested by the authorities for complaints about his continuing to proclaim Jesus Christ. And through a series of events, Paul ended up appealing to Caesar and going to Rome as was his right as a Roman citizen to go to trial there. Uh, we're taking a one week break from our normal series in Acts right now. If you remember last week with Pastor Dan, this same Apostle Paul was in Athens. So he hasn't made it to Rome yet in our normal series. So we're jumping ahead a little. Uh, Paul says, walk in a manner worthy of the calling, or rather live in a manner worthy of the calling. So what has Paul been writing to them in Ephesians up to this point? He says, therefore, live in a manner worthy. So what's the therefore? How has he built, in, built up to this so far? So here's some main points from Ephesians that, they ha that Paul has covered. Okay, so we are adopted as God's sons through Jesus Christ, sons and daughters, redeemed through the riches of his grace, the hope for our inheritance in Christ. And that's from chapter one. The truth that Jesus was raised from the dead and rules at the right hand of God, the Father in heaven. That by grace we have been saved through Jesus Christ. We are God's workmanship created for good works that God has prepared ahead of time for us, Ephesians 2. We are no longer separated from God and reconciled with him through Jesus. That we are one in Christ, all persons, regardless of our background. And then there's also Paul's prayer for believers that we would know the love of Christ and be filled with the fullness of God. So what is the calling? Walk as in live your life, conduct yourself in a manner that's worthy of the identity and calling of being followers of Jesus and living, walking in a way that reflects who we are in Jesus, a reflection of how God wants us to live and awareness of the impact we have on others as followers of Christ and let them see our lives, and to unity as a church of Christ followers. Later, in the chap later chapters in the book of Ephesians also talk about unity of believers and unity of the church. Okay, the, our next verses are verses two and three. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So when Paul is saying unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, he's telling us to be one in Christ. Paul also writes and talks about the characteristics of the Christian believer who makes this possible, how we walk in a worthy manner. Okay, so Jesus in his life modeled for us these characteristics that, that are in our verse. So humility. So this is the opposite of arrogance, modest, not feeling superior or inferior, inferior, taking into account what Christ wants and other people's situation and thoughts, not doing anything out of selfish ambition or conceit. We also have gentleness. So that's not harsh, but demonstrating consideration. Not being weak, but balancing strength with humility and gentleness implies self-control. Patience, this is exercising humility, gentleness, long-suffering. They all kind of work together, right? I think we all know what patience is or lack thereof, right? Love, bearing with one another in love. Kind of goes with patience. It helps or allows us to work through difficult situations between each other. And then eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in peace. That is the goal of all this, unity. So we need to be accurate in what we believe, but we also 
and need to have appropriate beliefs, but we also need to do this in love. Okay, we need to hold to what we believe, but also show love. You can't just hold what we believe in and, and not show any love. In the next verses, four through six, Paul explains, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Again, these are key beliefs reminding us why we're, we are united as one and the basis for our unity. So there is one body, the overall church that consists of all Christians, and one spirit, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity who indwells in the church and all believers. There is one hope, one faith, one baptism through one Lord, who is Jesus Christ. And we're reconciled to God and saved by grace through faith in Jesus. That is our hope and faith. So there is one God and Father of all, God the Father. And there's a sense here of the vastness of God, his overall sovereignty, power, and omnipresence. God is over the church, is, is, is working through the church, and is in all those who are part of the church, us believers. So when I understand God better, when I understand the Bible and what it is telling me, I am better able to walk how God wants me to. We have a tremendous calling in Christ. And that brings us to our first principle. And that is knowing God and what he has done enables our worthy walk. Knowing God and what he has done enables our worthy walk. Again, we should have an appreciation and gratefulness for what God has done. We should work to understand how God wants to live according to the Bible his instructions and guiding principles. It, help, it helps to know the identity and calling we have as being follow, followers of Jesus Christ. And we want a desire to live out and walk in a way that reflects who we are in Jesus Christ. So in terms of knowing and this, this help of being able to, to live as God wants us or live pleasing to God, um, we recently, Janet and I recently had our wedding anniversary this month. Uh, so one of my sons called me up. I won't tell you which son, but he was playing piano. And um, he said, hey, Dad, what should I do for your anniversary? Now, see, he knows us. He knows to call me, all right? Because I don't care about the anniversary and, and what you get us, because I already bought what I wanted for myself, right? <laughs> But he knows and is smart enough to keep mom happy, all right? So we decided on an ice cream cake. I know that that's what Janet would like. So we got a cake. Isn't that lovely? Okay. Um, this is way better than a new spatula or something, right? <laughs> Can you imagine? You guys know Janet. Can you imagine? Oh, here's your new spatula. Happy anniversary, mom. Okay. Um, it's cookies and cream ice cream. I knew that. I got it wrong with the type of cake. I thought chocolate sounded good. It should have been white cake, but she was okay with it. The funny thing is, see, it says happy 30th anniversary. Okay, so it's our 32nd anniversary. <laughs> okay, so, you know, it's okay. I go, oh, he didn't know. But then I found out no one knew. They were frantically work looking through our wedding anniversary album to try to figure it out, which is so cute. But you know what? It's okay. I'd rather have the ice cream cake than the right year. <laughs> okay? So the knowledge of us really helped. It allowed them to appropriately help us celebrate in a manner worthy of the occasion. It's kind of a funny example with the cake, okay? But think about how we can better please God by knowing him, by understanding him. How we can grow to be like, how can we grow to be like Christ if we don't understand the character of God and how the Bible tells us to conduct ourselves? The general way of viewing life and living out our faith. So in terms of application, how does appreciation of what God has done for me help me remember to have these characteristics we talked about in dealing with others? Humility, gentleness, patience, and love. Do I seek 
church unity, and remember the basis of this unity, oneness in Christ? Do I appreciate the other congregations that we have? We have three congregations in our church here. Do I greet them? Do I say hi? Um, my Chinese consists of um, a smile and a wave. Okay? I can say, good morning, ni hao. And then for Cantonese, I think it's Josan. I, I don't really know. But I just say hi, and their, their English is better than my Chinese, so they, they, the smile goes a long way. Okay? Um, while there's some aspect of me resolving to do this by my own will and desire, we need to realize the help and enablement we receive from God's leading us with his Holy Spirit, okay? We need to take action, but we also need to depend on God and ask for his help. For our second division, it's walk in a manner that exercises our gifts. Walk in a manner that exercises our gifts. So verse seven, by grace, but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. So we as Christians have been given various spiritual gifts and abilities by God for the benefit of the church. The church is enriched by these various gifts and by the diversity of what each person can do. Verses 8 through 10, Therefore it says, When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions of earth? He who descended is one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. So this is a, a, a reference to Psalm. Um, Christ not only ascended into heaven, but he first descended into the lower parts of the earth. That's what it says. So that's a little bit unfamiliar, a little bit confusing. But basically, in terms of descended, there are various interpretations. So one interpretation is that Christ came to earth. He descended as a man. He humbled himself and then had victory over sin when he was raised. It also could be a reference that Jesus descended into Hades temporarily. Uh, there's a reference in 1 Peter 3.19 of Jesus proclaiming to imprison spirits. And then third, it could be that Jesus descended into the grave. Death, resurrection, and victory over sin. Okay, I think the first or the third, probably the third that Jesus descended into the grave and has death and victory over sin. To me, that, that um, seems to make the most sense. But again, there's various opinions. But the important thing to remember is that while Jesus descended, he did ascend. He did ascend to the right hand of God. And because of his victory, we are given spiritual gifts. All right. Uh, let's go on to verse 11 and 12. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. So, apostles, Jesus had many disciples, but selected 12 apostles. They were to give witness to the resurrection from, a personal, from personal experience and help lay the foundation of the church. Prophets, New Testament prophet is one who proclaims the word of God. The Holy Spirit would share God's truth with those having the gift. Evangelists tell the good news of Jesus. We should all do this, but uh, those with a gift are particularly gifted, talented in telling the world about Christ and explaining and bringing others to Christ. And then we have shepherds and teachers. Pastor means shepherd, so guide, take care of the local sheep, the local church, and teaching as well. The purpose of these gifted leaders is to equip the rest of the saints, all of us, to minister and build up the body of Christ, the church. And there are a variety of other spiritual gifts not listed in this Ephesians passage, but mentioned it in other places in the Bible. So I'm going to give one reference, which is Romans 12, 6 through 8. Romans 12. After saying that we are one body in Christ and have gifts that differ, Paul lists the spiritual gifts of prophecy, service, teaching, 
exhortation or encouraging, generosity, also known as giving, leading, and acts of mercy. And then 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11, helps us in terms of the purpose of spiritual gifts. So 1 Peter 4, 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So a few points to note on spiritual gifts. Everyone has a spiritual gifts or gifts that are given by God. So everyone has, has a spiritual gift. It's for the good of the body, and it's meant to be used. So from, and from a practical perspective, I think that it helps using whatever talents you have and then see what transpires, okay? I, you don't want to sit around and go, oh, I wonder if I have the gift of giving, right? Just go ahead and do it, and then see how God uses it, and over time, you'll get a sense of how God has, has led and blessed you, all right? Uh, verse 13, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So as we grow together and use the gifts God has given us, the church body experiences unity, the church becomes more spiritually mature, so grows in spiritual maturity, and the church becomes more like Christ, and those of us in the church become more like Christ. We have the term sanctification, and that is the believer's progressive growth in holiness. Sanctification is the pr believer's progressive growth in holiness. Those being sanctified are increasingly conformed to Christ's image. So um, believers, as believers obey and carry out the work that God has for them, he changes their character, and um, sanctification is a process throughout our whole life as we become more and more like Jesus. So you never arrive. Uh, whatever your age, young or old, you're, you're becoming more like Christ, and, and God's working on you. So this brings us to the second principle. All believers are gifted to help each other mature in Christ. All believers are gifted to help each other mature in Christ. So I'm encouraged by the things that I see happen at our church, uh, seeing how we as a church body help. So I'm going to mention some things that we have going on or that I've seen occurring, but it's a small sample. And as we go through these, I want you to think, wow, that's really a great thing. Praise God. But also keep in the back of your mind, oh, could I do this? Could I help? Could I help? Could I be part of something like this? Um, so let's go ahead and look at a few things. Okay, so Vacation Bible School uh, is, is um, around a week long, one week long, Monday through Saturday. Somebody nod. Okay, so Vacation Bible School, uh, we bring, bring children in. We offer in and out of our church, okay? So this is a barrel of monkeys, Okay. I don't know if that's still in, but that's a really great toy. Look at that. Somebody did that. Actually, it was Lily. But look at I couldn't do that, right? If she told me, though, I could follow directions. But no way could I do that. But it brought a smile to my face. Now, the children's program, we mentioned this, but I really want to emphasize that the children's program always needs teachers and helpers, administrative things, too, okay? Keeping things orderly, all right? So... Not everybody has to teach, but you can help with other things. And then, did you know that Vacation Bible School, or VBS, that for the last two years, Faith has personally interviewed everybody who wants to help for the first time. So if you walked by her office, you would see her talking to the youth. But she interviewed both uh, youth and adults to get to know them better, to help them to understand what VBS is. And it, it was really beneficial because... Not everybody's from our church or knows faith that well. And so it got, got helped her to introduce them to, our, introduce them to our church and get to know them better on how they could help out. 
Um, another exciting thing that happened in our church recently is youth summer camp. Okay, YSC youth summer camp. Um, working adults took time off for a week of youth summer camp. Okay, a, a lot of them are young adults. I don't know what it is now, but when I was a young adult, in my first job, I got two weeks of vacation. Okay, so they took one week to invest in the lives of our youth. And from our last uh, baptism for the youth involved, we had many of them talking about the impact of youth summer camp on their lives, how it helped their growth spiritually, and played a key role into them deciding to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. So here are some things that, that are important that I could do or maybe that, that I think that all of us could do. Okay, so one is being encouraging and friendly. I know that when I first started at church, it was persons greeting me and making me feel welcome, talking to me. Uh, that, helped, that helped keep me coming, okay? That, that is a big uh, part of the church. It's helpful to encourage the pastors and ministers, uh, mention appreciation to them, see if they need help. In general, be encouraging. And I know that, um, I'm not saying to do this, but I know that some of you, when you go on vacation, you think of the pastors and maybe bring them something, okay? So, you know, it's nice. Okay, how many of you like donuts, food? Okay, I am good with food. How many of you are good with food, okay? Um, good at eating snacks? So that's something that you could help with, all right? Um, here we have a, a picture of Mother's Day where we had appreciation uh, in honor of the mothers. You can see us with the snacks. Okay, that's, that's something that's good to help out. And then that's for our Sunday school class. Um, we're not having it this week or next week, but it's back uh, on the 10th. And we're going through food and faith. Okay, we're talking about food and how it relates to uh, different areas and the religion there. But everybody can bring snacks. I mean, if you have a Costco or Sam's Club or you can go to Ralph's, okay? But, you know, you go, just, just think about things you could do to help. Okay, um, second service, they put away chairs afterwards. Uh, you might not think it's little, but it's all of us working together. So um, we also haven't mentioned many times about our, our sound audio visual, um, so thanks. But you know, the persons that do that, they learned how to do it. They just didn't roll out of bed and say, oh, I know how to, I know how to do live stream sound. Okay, they learned, all right? Uh, we have our PowerPoint, video, and sound persons, so uh, thank you. Okay, so in terms of application, what do I know which could help the church? Okay, we all have different various talents, skills, and then what could I learn or grow into? Many of, for me personally, many of the ministries were things that I developed and learned as I went. There was a need, I was willing to help out, and then I got better and learned as I went along. Um, we're gonna hear from our a cappella choir a little bit later. That's a great way to encourage the church and um, bless us, okay? So, so different things. Think about, oh, what do I enjoy doing? What do I maybe not like doing, but I'm willing to help and there's a need? You know, just, just think about it, okay? We can all do different things, various things, but these are all essential for the proper functioning of the church. Okay, so our third division, is walk in a manner that matures our church body. Walk in a manner that matures our church body. Verse 14, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. So that's a vision of us being mature, knowledgeable, solid, stable, anchored in faith, not easily confused or misled by false teachers or wrong doctrine. Uh, a storm, a figurative storm of confusing teaching could be blowing around us, but we are mature and secure. Verse 15, rather speaking the truth in love, we're to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. So from this equipping, we're able to have truth and love both in our speech and actions. We grow to be more like Christ, grow to be Christ-like in our attitude, speech, and conduct. And then verse 16, from the whole body, 
joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. So the whole church body, our church, grows as we carry out the proper function. Uh, Paul, emphasized in this, Paul emphasized in this passage, he's emphasizing church body growth as a whole as opposed to individual growth, although growing individually is important. But each person contributes to the body's growth as we exercise the gifts given to him, given to them by God. So not growing in isolation. It helps us to mature as we walk together. So Pastor Dan articulates the attitude and mindset of how we want to approach church life and growing together. So this is a great slide. You know how Pastor Dan puts up quotes from everybody with a nice picture? I thought it would be really fun to put him up there, right? <laughs> nice picture, huh? Okay, so again, it's amazing what you can get off our church website, okay? Um, tell your friends. Okay, in a church that includes every stage of life, we are privileged to see and hear what it means to follow Jesus faithfully throughout our lifetime. Whether you might find yourself, wherever you might find yourself today, we want you to know that we're here for you as a safe place where we experience grace, a nurturing community where we encourage growth, a healthy family where we embrace God in all of life. Isn't that great? So let's, let's, let's strive towards that, okay? By the grace of God, let's try to make our church like that. Principle three is Growing in Christ's likeness is a combined church effort. Okay, growing like Christ. Okay, maybe hyphenated, maybe not, but Christ's likeness. It's a combined church effort. We need each other to grow and mature in Christ. We should be discerning and lovingly contribute to build up the body of Christ. So um, we change the light bulbs in the church sanctuary. All right. Really, it's Robert. Robert said, now if you look up, the lights, are, the lights are nice. Okay, but we had, a couple years ago, we had a lot of lights that were out. And Robert said, we need to change the light bulbs. I can't do it by myself. So as you can see, it really isn't a one-person job. Okay? So we have a, you can see there's a scaffolding there. Is that big enough to see? You can see the scaffolding. We had to carry the scaffolding out from the room over there, put it together. We had to make sure it was stable. It wasn't going to fall down. You can see we have a few ladders, okay? So um, you have to check each light bulb, make sure it's okay. Um, it was kind of a humbling experience for me. Up on that scaffolding, it's not that easy to climb up. One of our, our Mandarin members, really great guy, he said, well, let me climb up and down because I'm younger, more flexible, and not as heavy. <laughs> this is what he told me. And the sad thing is, I said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay? Um, I had one job in this. I mean, I helped out. But my main job was to turn, uh, as you go up to each light, there's a control board back there where it's on or off. Okay? It's like a flip switch, all right? My job was Robert would up there, go up there. He'd have the light bulb, and he said, is it, is it off? And I would go, I'd yell from the back, off. James, can you yell off? Yeah. Yeah, okay, just like that, all right? That was my job. He said, I'm not going to get electrocuted, but it could pop and scare me, and I could fall. Okay? So that's my job. Now, he doesn't know this, but there's a lot of lights up there. And one time, I said, he said, off. I said, off. And I go, oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, so he doesn't know this. I can't wait till Catherine finds out. Okay? But my point is that it's clear that this is not something that you do by yourself. This is not something done alone. You can see we're holding the ladder. Do not call OSHA on us, okay? Um, that ladder really didn't need to be held, but we thought that we would stabilize it, okay? So this is, so growing in Christ's likeness is a combined church effort. It works out better when we can encourage one another in this process. Okay, so in terms of application, what might I do to help myself and others grow in maturity? Help in having a warming and welcoming environment. We can all be involved in this. Uh, doing some of the things along with the church. We have a daily Bible reading plan from the church app, follow along. We have a weekly prayer meeting 
on Wednesdays. Um, be a part of that. Ask Dave Lau. He can email that to you. Uh, we have Sunday School, the Church Rooted Program. These are just a few examples. Be part of a fellowship group and reach out to others. These are, this is way, these are ways to be part of the to be part of different church activities. Um, similar to what I said before, this is more than just willing myself to do something. Okay, this is praying, reading the Bible for God's direction and leading, encouragement from others, and having the Holy Spirit guide us. We need each other by God's design. Okay, so growing together, knowing God and what he has done enables our worthy walk. All believers are gifted to help each other mature in Christ. Growing in Christ's likeness is a combined church effort. Okay, God desires that we grow together in Christ as a church family who seeks maturity and strengthens unity. Let's pray. Father, thank you for our church. Thank you for each other, and we thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. I pray that you be with us as we grow together. Thank you for the privilege of going through life together with each other. I pray for those that are new to our church or feel uncomfortable, that you would, you would help them to see the love of Christ and that we could, we could all together grow to be more and more like your son. Uh, we pray for your guidance and your mercy in our lives. Pray that if we don't know you, that we would come to you, Lord, and um, know the abundant riches of your mercy. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.